this podcast episode, I had a great interview with Kenya McGuire Johnson, otherwise known as Kenya, a Chicago soul jazz singer who has put out a lot of great recordings over the past few years. She's a Stevie Wonder, Billie Holiday, Minnie Riperton inspired singer who's had a lot of great releases that have charted on the UK soul chart and she's also charted up to number 28 on Billboard's Urban Adult Contemporary chart. I've known Kenya for many years and we went to college together back in the day and it was great to talk and catch up with her during the interview so I hope you enjoy this podcast as much as I did. Well this is uh, an, an interview I wanted to do with you uh, for a little while to talk about some of your approaches to how you run your business and how you basically uh, guide guide others as well. But I, I want just to, to guide others, you have to have uh, the experience in doing that. <clears throat> so I want to basically walk people through that process. But before we jump into that, I want to introduce you and uh, have you tell everybody about yourself, and then uh, then we'll start talking about some more details. So, okay. tell people about what what do you want people to know about uh, Kenya? Who is Kenya? Yeah. Um, well, I'm Kenya, and my my formal name is Kenya McGuire Johnson, but um, I go, my artist name is Kenya. Um, I'm independent, independent artist, singer, songwriter. Um, and actually now also music. I'm going to call myself a music exec. <laughs> Only because there's so much more business that I'm doing now. But but my passion, my heart of this artist thing is, is performing and recording and singing. And um, I've been in music now professionally, meaning recording and, and releasing music since 2010. Um, but prior to that, I, I did a lot of music growing up, but in my early adulthood to mid adulthood or whatever, um, I, I had a very different life. Um, I was a practicing physical therapist, which then led me into, uh, education where I began teaching physical therapy students. And, um, so I have a kind of weird background for an artist, but <laughs> it's all a great background. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it informs your music. Yes, and that's what I mean. It's it's important when people ask me, you know, tell me about yourself as an artist. It's, I always have to kind of give this backstory because it's very influential into what I where I am right now. And um, so teaching, I, I did that, but more than that, I, I went back and got a master's in counseling. And I think the master's in counseling um, is what really kind of started bridging me getting from just being a clinician and a teacher um, into actually really getting more into the psychosocial and how, why do people do and how do people do. So uh, with all that being said, once I got into music and left all of that, <laughs> left all of that traditional stuff back in 2010, um, I my passion was always music. So that's what really pushed me there. And it's now 2016, so we're talking six six solid years of um, really grinding and really learning and really growing and developing as an artist. And um, within this time, now that's why I hark back to my past, right. um, because a lot of the skills that I gained um, in those previous careers are helping me now. And just uh, just to let everybody know, that uh, we've known each other for how long? <laughs> <laughs> I guess technically since like 18 years old, probably 17, yeah, 18. Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> since college, since freshman year. College, yep. Wow. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's a while. So, yeah, we were both in a choir, singing in a choir together. And, uh, yeah, yeah we, we both cut our teeth on, on learning the ropes of the music industry. Yes. By, by being in a, in a choir and it was so professionally run by a gentleman by the name of uh, Paul Gatley and wow. uh, he's no longer with us but he was uh, a definite inspiration in terms of professionalism absolutely <laughs> I know he's watching I'm like oh I can't disappoint Paul I but yeah that's right definitely yeah yeah, yeah. so that, I just wanted to mention that one 
So yeah. just as some of the, the questions I wanted to ask you mm-hmm. uh, about your business and um, a big part about what I talk about in my book are concepts of organization, uh, developing a plan and how you can get organized as a business. And just for you, who did you call first to uh, to join your team or who did you ask first to, to reach out to first to help you build what you what you have going on now? Yeah, um, this was kind of in phases and I and I tell people, you know, it's it's for me, it has not been one wallop boom and then it took off. It was kind of these phases. So there were different people at critical phases. Right, right. And right. Um, for me, I initially just really started out as just being artists and just, you know, I just want to sing and, you know, and I think that's where most artists are at. You know, I just want to sing, I want to perform. Um, and so I wasn't really thinking business as much as, you know, I want to record something. Um, but a producer here in Chicago by the name of Maurice Joshua um, was my very, was the very first uh, producer that I ever worked with. And Maurice is a, a Grammy award winning producer. So this was pretty huge for me to have an opera. <laughs> you, you step right in. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's, it, it, that's a whole other story how I even met him because I did not meet him through music. He was in my spin class okay. <laughs> for cycling, for exercising. So for people out there, that's not a normal situation. You just don't walk up on a Grammy award winning producer. Well, it, it, no, no. I mean, I, I met a couple of people who um, I had a very close or have a very close girlfriend who had who's in theater and music. And I had told her I was trying to start to be an artist. And she recommended that I talk to this group of producers that had a business together. Now, Maurice was a part of that group, but at the time, she never mentioned him because of his stature. So I actually went to one of the guys um, who was a little bit more accessible. And his name um, is Liddell Townsell, who still pretty, had, Liddell did a, a major house song um, called New New, and people know the song. But at any rate, he, he definitely, you know, he had his home studio. He was very relaxed and it was very good with working with someone like me who really had never done this. And he's who recommended I connect with a gentleman. He said a gentleman named Maurice Joshua. But that's all he said. And and what ended up happening, the, the divine timing situation was that I actually, um, I saw a flyer on Liddell's floor and it had a picture of a guy. I said, that guy's in my spin class. He said, that's Maurice. I'm like, oh, so anyway, Maurice right, right. was the first guy who really, one, took a chance on me, but he was the first person who started talking about independent artistry and what does that mean? Right. right. He did. And so I would say that was the first person who got me to start thinking about what does that mean to be an independent artist and how does that mean I have to think business wise? Um, but I still didn't really get, so that was like the first introduction, but it really wasn't until I would say where I really came up with a plan and really started strategizing until years after that. So, um, in 2013, there's a gentleman named John Hill here in Chicago, a a very close friend of our families, but also known to start a lot of businesses. And um, from a, it has done a lot of um, consulting for startup um, businesses in, in a lot of realms, from entertainment to uh, clothing lines to, uh, I mean, I think he's even done um, some sports um, related kind of campaigns. So you had some business direction early on. And that's that's the thing a lot of people getting into this don't really conceptualize is yeah. that it's you know, they come in, I love music, I love singing, I love playing, I love making beats, all right. of that. And then they have no concept of an organization, you know, bringing several people together to basically knock out a whole lot of work and, exactly. and align and focus what your dream is. And right. That, so, right. so this, this gentleman uh, basically gave you that focus. Yeah, John is who, Maurice came and kind of gave me the facts of music, kind of like, you know, when you're going to go on iTunes and, you know, kind of these things that you need to know just to get your music out there. But what John did is what you just said, um, talked more about, okay, we need to talk about who are the players that are going to kind of help you with this. And um, before even getting into players, he got really, we spent like a whole summer, honestly, where we met once a week um, to talk about 
not just that, but early on talk about lifestyle and who am I? Um, I, I just for people, you know, watching, I'm a mom, I have two kids. Um, I have, I'm married and, um, so I have a busy, a busy life. <laughs> yeah, so, I would say <laughs> that's, that's a lot on the plate. So, so John's, John's concern was, how are you going to do this? How are you going to run a business, do a project, have us two sons, have a marriage? How are you going to be human in all of this? And so I, I really, really value that because he went, as we were planning in those early stages and figuring out the people to get involved, he had a really good concept of my lifestyle and, you know, it had to fit that it, it, it didn't, I couldn't go off and, you know, go move to New York city and, you know, now start this whole, you know, brick and mortar. I mean, it wasn't feasible for my lifestyle. Yeah. That's the misconception. A lot of people have is, you know, that they, they can't do anything where they are. You right. Know, you right. Know, you, you can start exactly where you are. Exactly where you are. And that's exactly what we did. That's exactly what we did. And so he didn't introduce me to all of my team people, but he was the person who kind of made me think in terms of team okay, and, and understand that concept and, you know, wanted me to kind of, and instead of um, go and like research and find, he's like, who are the current people in your life? Like, who are the um, you know, you, you've already, I, at that point, that was in 2013. So at that point I had already released music. So he's like, well, who were the musicians that you worked with and who were the producers and who did your cover art and who, you know, just trying to understand who were the people I'd already worked with mm -hmm. to see maybe these people, you know, do we keep these people and keep moving forward or do we, do we gain and, and do something different? Um, so he got me kind of started and, and he, he introduced me to a key person, honestly, who got the ball really, really moving. Um, so and that, I, that was a, a publicist. Actually, no, this this person, she's a radio promoter um, based here in Chicago. Her name is Kathy Carroll. And Kathy had, uh, she had done radio promotions for um, Columbia. I mean, she had done some for Sony, for some major, major labels. And, um, and for those trying to understand that she was in charge of getting songs on radio for these major um, label artists. And so she, she left the labels to do her own independent promotions. Yeah. And um, because, I mean, she'd worked with R. Kelly, um, she'd worked with Amel LaRue, um, and, and particularly because she had worked with Amel LaRue, who's in the same kind of space right. as me in terms musically, um, that's what made John say, you know what, I think we should just let her at least hear your stuff and see what, if it's something that she'd maybe want to talk to you more about. And, um, so yeah, Kathy was the person she liked what she heard. Um, at that point I had a really solid, um, pr a solid produced single that mm -hmm. was kind of like my commercial. <laughs> to kind of be like, this is who I am. Yeah, and a lot of people don't even have that that awareness that you have to come to the table with a product. And in, in order to open a business, you got to have something to sell. Yep. And yep. it's and you got to have a nice refined product to sell mm -hmm. that that has you know been tested and mm -hmm. other people have listened to it. So. Mm -hmm. That that was a perfect opportunity. And it's timing, everything. So we're 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 seeing a lot of the same themes that we've mm -hmm. heard over the years with artists and their success, uh, with with what you've been through. Um, so before we go deeper into the team, mm -hmm. um, let's rewind back to your husband and kids schedule <laughs> and running your business. How do you structure your day? <laughs> How do you get anything accomplished? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, well, Jesus. Yeah, we, we know that that's the higher power to get it done. <laughs> but, but what are your steps? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think I finally, and this has taken, oh my God, this is, this. I mean, this is always a work in progress because a family is dynamic. A family doesn't just sit and, you know. That's it, a it, very it, nice <laughs> word. <laughs> I would go with chaotic, but that's a nice word. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to be really pleasant. But um, so there's there's always shifts. Just even if I was just staying home baking cookies all day and not raising anybody, there would be these natural shifts. But at this point, um, 
<laughs> the way, just to be honest, this is kind of how I, 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 how we course out our day. My, my husband, and to add more, <laughs> to add more salt to this wound. <laughs> anyway, my, my husband is um, a physician. He's a, he's a, a surgeon. So he doesn't have a, a nine to five. No, that, that, yeah. that would be too easy. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> that would be way too simple. So what we have learned, he and I are, I've known my husband literally for most of my adulthood. I've known, he's known me since I was 23. So, and I, I'm not 23 no more. So, I mean, we're talking really? years, you know, 20 <laughs> years or so we, we've known each other. So he knows me very, very well. Um, and he and I have a very, very transparent relationship and we're very, we, we call them come to Jesus meetings mm -hmm. where we sit down and we just get really honest, like, okay, you know, this is what I'm trying to do, or this is what we need to do. And so now we're at the point really, um, my sons are 13 and nine, so they're getting older, which helps a lot. Um, when they were younger, it was harder. But they're getting older and you know our day usually it begins honestly at like five in the morning we <laughs> my husband and i kind of wake up between 5 5 30 just to, and literally we do and i'm not like literally every morning so what's your day like what's your day like what's this day about so we kind of just figure that out and i am a very organized i will say this might be odd for an artist but i'm i don't like routine like i don't like doing the same things every day but I'm very methodical and I need, I need order, right. you know, order is, is important for me. So, and having children forces you to me, if you're going to have a normal life, um, <laughs> to, you know, put your kids in order. So my kids all know that mommy's a musician, that mommy works from, you know, home a lot during the day and doing her bit. Although my kids think I just sit on Facebook. They're like, oh, you do a sit on Facebook. <laughs> like, I want your job. <laughs> right. Like, no, I'm not, you know. <laughs> um, and that's the promotion side, but they all know. So everybody is very aware and they know, you know, the schedule. So, you know, we get, it's all about the kids in the morning and getting them food and, you know, that crazy shuffle. And it's chaotic. It's crazy every morning because nobody wants to brush their teeth and you have to say every day, you know, brush your teeth. So that's crazy. But once they're gone um, in the morning and they're at the age now where, you know, they have, they're in school, they're in regular school. So I, I basically have the full day. Um, to work on business matters, um, if I need to do rehearsals, practice, whatever I can jam in <laughs> right, right. My, my six to seven hour day um, and really more like five to six hour day because I have to eat and I do try to work out and all these other things. But um, and, and it's at the point now where when they get home, the, the good thing is, one, I'm, I'm home when they get home. So that's a huge, you know, plus. And they know mommy's still working. So um, unless we we gonna go get our snack and do what we need to do, and then I try to shut things down when the, it's time for particularly my youngest's homework time. And that's that's really it. And then and then we you know I cook dinner. I'm cooking dinner like almost wow. every. I know. And that's mainly because again, um, you know, we're our family life is very important to us. So that's our time to kind of connect. And so if if I don't cook or if we don't grab something to eat together, then, you know, we lose that. And, um, my husband and I really are committed to that. And, um, you know, my husband sometimes is able to get home at a normal time. Sometimes he's not, it just depends on his schedule. And that's kind of our normal flow. And then the evening, um, once I kind of get, you know, family time together, if I, if I have an extra hour or so, then I'll commit it to, you know, doing what I need to do business wise or music wise. But, you know, once they get home, you know, it's like, Ugh. you know, <laughs> I, I, and I totally appreciate you taking the time out of your day <laughs> to talk to me because I know it's madness. <laughs> no, but it's, you know, and this is the thing I, I tell people, I don't expect, um, I think you have some artists who are who have who are kind of the artist entrepreneur type, like their brains, um, they're they're very good art artist wise exactly. and creative wise, but they think in organized methods. And so I don't think that that's common. And I and I you know I think I tell artists be very honest with that part of yourself, um, because if you are not like that. And, and you're trying to be an independent artist, a working independent artist, you're gonna, it's gonna be a struggle because yeah, you need Yeah, you, need you gotta that. have some type of organizational structure. And yeah. I, I, 
you know, to be honest, I've had to have to develop that over the years myself. And I, I think of it as a muscle, you know, right. that you have to train just like anything else. With Absolutely. Your, you know, with your craft, you're developing your finger muscles or your vocal muscles, all of that stuff. So, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm on the same page. And it's not, you know, I, I, I mean, that's kind of how a typical regular day goes. But see, I didn't even mention when I have shows or if I have yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> rehearsals or shoots or travel. I mean, it's a whole other beast. And I, I do have, I live in, I'm based in Chicago. Um, and that's not where my husband nor I are from. We're not, we're not from here. So we don't have, you know, I don't have my mom and dad and he, you don't have his parents and stuff around us to help. Um, but I do have a niece um, who has been the biggest blessing. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot, I mean, she is part of the team big time because she helps with my kids right. when I have to, you know, when I have to travel or, you know, particularly when I have to travel or when just schedules are just, I've got events or shows and my husband's got stuff. Um, she will step in and, and help. And it's so funny because like um, my son, my youngest son to, today, as a matter of fact, they're having a VIP luncheon at his school and they asked, he's in fourth grade and they asked the fourth graders, you know, pick someone who's a VIP in your life to come now now most people was like probably their mother or their okay, <laughs> of course but my my son picked my niece yeah. you know he's like because she helps us so much like she's really important i'm like oh yes no so she is when i when i put this uh, organizational um chart in my book what mm -hmm. i talked about was the people that you're going to have on your team mm -hmm. and she's definitely a part of your team she's, absolutely I, she could actually be considered a personal manager Yep. I mean, she's she she does from obviously stuff with our kids to when I've had shows and I need somebody to help with merch, you know, she she will come out and do that. She will do phone calls. She has been wonderful. Um, now, I will say she's like, I'm trying to let her have a life because she she's an adult. <laughs> and she, you know, she's not married. She doesn't have kids, but she would like to maybe one yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking up all my time. <laughs> <laughs> so she, you know, we're and so that's another transition actually our family's going through because she she just she was living with us and she just got her, you know, her own place and she and her took her dog and we're like, Oh Lord, the dog oh, wow. is gone too, right? Yeah. You know, so um yeah, we had a dog in the mix of all this too. But um yeah, she so she actually just recently moved into her own place. But we've created kind of another, you know. It's just a matter. I, I encourage people when you, you know, when you're thinking about this, and particularly your support system when it comes to family, because um, you've got the business support and then you've got the family side. Um, it's going to ebb and flow. It's right, going right. to shift. Um, and so to say, oh, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to wait until I have this kind of perfect. Then it's, you're, it's, you're not gonna yeah, do it. It's never gonna be perfect. Yeah. Yep. No, never. Yeah, and but at, I think uh, at some point. Um, people have to understand that these these roles are being fulfilled. That, yes. That that there are roles that exist within companies and organizations, and yeah. as an independent artist, you have to account for that some way. And yes. you found ways, more organic ways, basically to account for that that setup. But that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That's that's. Uh, I think a lot of people can get something out of that. God, so I I am. Cause that's, <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, it's huge. It's I, we our, my family, honestly, I wouldn't be able to do this right, without, right. without my immediate family. Yeah. So on that line, uh, aside from the familial situations and all of that, <laughs> what are some of the biggest challenges in running your business in, well, you know, the internal, what's some of the external situations? Yeah. You know, um, it, it, it varies, and I think it also depends on perspective. Um, I think the more obvious challenges are always, you know, financial and, you know, just, you know, being able to have the resources financially to support, you know, the team. My team members, you know, include a publicist. They include, um, I have I have people who I call consultants um, only because they have they have kind of niche things that they do well. So, you know, I have somebody on board who um, has done a lot of booking um, and he's not a booking agent, but he's done a lot of booking and logistical planning for that. So he's kind of consulting on it. So you've got all these people that, you know, who are really critical and wonderful, but they they, they have to be paid <laughs> yeah. on time. <laughs> 
<laughs> they have to be paid on time. And so, I mean, I know that a lot of artists do a lot of bartering and a lot of, you know, you do this for me, I'll do that for you. And I, I think there's nothing wrong with that when you're kind of starting to get things rolling. But once you start really as trying to establish yourself, you, you have to go in business mode and professional mode, which means, you know, to me, people need to be compensated exactly. for their, their work. Um, so I think, you know, that is, is a huge challenge in knowing that you need certain people or certain resources, but, you know, having the, the funds to, to be able to do that. That's, that's a huge one. Um, I think really understanding, and, and this is something that I think I've improved in a lot, but I think a lot of artists struggle with this, is really understanding the actual process of of being in the music industry and you know really understanding what's currently happening in music because music is really it's it has changed really it's, drastically it's, and it changes very fast it's yeah. tre very trendy very trendy very quick on every level you know uh not just in the business sense but just musically creatively wise um what what you know, accessibility wise, you know, how people are accessing music. There's rumors right now going around that iTunes is going to stop downloads, stop digital downloading. I've just been, I've, I just spent a couple of days ago reading these articles um, because streaming has become such a huge thing That's and the they're, they're losing money. Mm -hmm. You know, they're losing money. People aren't downloading music the way they used to download. So they, you know, obviously have to think. And iTunes is kind of like Kleenex, you know. I mean, yeah, it's, no, like, it's, it's like, like it's like, been around for so long, <laughs> right? It's been around for so long, and you don't even know music. I tell people, you know, Kleenex is a brand, that's a company, you yeah. know. But we say Kleenex to get any yeah, tissue, and it's, it's kind of like iTunes, like Q-tips, you know. <laughs> No, they're cotton iTunes swabs. <laughs> that's the, right. And people think with iTunes, you know, that that's the only place you can get music is exactly. iTunes, you know. But um, so so those kinds of shifts and understanding them. And then trying to figure out, oh gosh, you know, how does that impact me, mm -hmm. and, and and what do I do, you know, that can be that can be challenging. And and I don't know if there is a perfect, you know, book or class that really everybody's trying to keep up. Right, you right. Know? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're 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 in the same company as major record labels trying to 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 put your finger in the wind and see where it's headed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Big so, time. what um what do you feel do you do well? with your business? <laughs> um, well, a I, I, couple things. I think what I feel is serving me well. Um... I'm going to help you answer that question <laughs> because the next question <laughs> that I actually had was okay. how, how are you using technology to grow your business? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I admit, and this is, this has to be my techie or my, my um, science math. I don't know. My, my other brain that um so yeah social media i am very um i think i have developed some pretty good strategies in using it and and trying to um maximize this very free <laughs> free service because remember i said money yeah. was you know a hard thing so and i cannot take all the credit to myself i wouldn't say that i just became this brilliant social media whatever i and I encourage artists to do, you've got to educate yourself. Um, I actually, early on, when I first started, I, I guess after I met with John and that whole consulting thing, and I realized, um, okay, I'm gonna have to start, you know, getting on Facebook more. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start, you know, tweeting, you know, and I have five followers. Like, I'm like, okay, this is what, you know, and I'm, and I'm being told by booking venues, well, we like your music, but you only have, you know, this many followers or you only have. Um, and that really frustrated me, really, really frustrated me because um, I understood because they're looking at who's going to come to these shows and, you know, they're trying to make money. But um, I didn't know, I, I, you know, I'm like, I have a family, I don't have time to just, you know, try to find followers. So one of the things that I did was I, um, and I don't even remember how I got connected to this person, but a friend of mine recommended that I talk to this um, social media, like, expert. She had a consulting business. Um, her name is Natalie Goucher. She's based in LA and she has like blown up now. I probably wouldn't even be able to get an appointment with Natalie at this point, but she, her whole business was about how do you get your social media together? And we did this very in-depth consultation where she, um, 
reviewed everything that I had and really gave, I cannot even begin to tell you the most valuable lessons um, of how you have to think about social media. Um, and even, you know, and that was some years ago and I, you know, it initially was kind of like, okay, you know, <laughs> I, was, mm-hmm. I was overwhelmed and I'm like, this is too much. And she was like, don't worry about it. You know, just, if you just keep practicing these small things, just keep it, it over time, it's, yeah. it's going to grow. And, um, so she's kind of who, who, so when we talk about these team people, you know, um, Takes she's not. Yeah, she. I mean, she's not on the team per se, but she was a person who added to greatly. You know, that was an investment. I, you know, I think her fee is probably not cheap, but it has gone a long, gone a long way. Right, right. And um, so, yeah, I think that's that's the social media bit. Um, I, I think I'm a good time manager. I, I'm very. Um, one of the things that I had to do as a physical therapist before getting into this life. When you're taking care of people's lives, <laughs> and I was I was not the physical therapist that worked at the gym. I worked in trauma, mm-hmm. um, in critical care in the hospitals, um, ICU care. So I worked with very, very, very sick people who you do one thing a little off, you know, you could throw off a whole lot of stuff. And so I think I, I, I know for a fact that being able to manipulate my schedule where I had to see this many patients in this many kind of critical conditions, know their diagnoses, do right. all this stuff. It taught me to be very like this. Very and yeah. um, I think that's to be, I'm not saying everybody go become a physical therapist, <laughs> become a physical therapist, but that's that for me was where I got that from. And so I know that I'm good at, right. you know, I got this appointment, this, 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 you know, and making sure that happens. Yeah, part, part of my situation, I, I was helping out, uh, I, I worked in a small business. So mm-hmm. I got to see all the, the layers of the business mm-hmm. from, you know, from a very great vantage point. And yeah. that helped me just really, you know, crystallize yeah. how you form how, and structure and organize a business. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, this is a million dollar business and, wow. and, and I was able to see how it was run and right. you know, it was like, okay, I, I can do this. <laughs> you right. know, I, I can put this together. <laughs> so, you know, boom. yeah, boom, it's going to be easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, I, it's, it's, I, I think, and, 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 and I want people to understand, cause I think sometimes that can feel intimidating when people hear, oh, well you got to work. Well, I didn't get to work with a million dollar company or I didn't get to well, treat pay. The thing is, is that everything, and and this goes a little bit off, and pro- I don't know if it's acceptable, but you know, my belief spiritually, you have pretty much all that you need. It's a matter of of you recognizing how to utilize it. Yeah. Um, and so, for whatever your destiny is or your goal is within, you know, this this music industry, if you're being honest with yourself and honest with this, is really where you want to be, a lot of the resources are in front of, are, are there. It's mm-hmm. just a matter of you got to figure out how to utilize them. And the skills are there too. They're there. They just have to be yep. put together. And then de- develop them and, and have your product yes. as, as, uh, as, as professional as, pro- as possible. As possible. And, and be really open to, you, you should, I always tell, I used, and I do, I still do it. I, I would go to people like, okay, I need you to tell me this like I'm six, you know, I'm like, I'm five years old, like I'm in third grade, exactly. you know, <laughs> because I'm still trying to figure this out. And so um, I'm very open with learning. And I think that, you know, artistry can sometimes, I think people can feel like there's a competitive um, space there. And so they won't necessarily let on that they don't know or that they need or that they, you know, and I, I think you really as a, if you're going to really be successful um, as a business person within this, you you need to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you or people who have more expertise exactly. and not necessarily smarter, but people who have more expertise than you um, and listen. And that that's totally aligned with uh, what I talk about is management, how yeah. to be a manager. And a good manager might not know how to do everything, mm-hmm. but they can put together the people that do. Absolutely. Yep. A good manager, a good leader. That is what that's about. You know, there's no way 
that your brain can know everything. It's just, it's, that's not the goal, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's not the goal. Well, that's, well, let me uh, do my, my last, uh, last question that I, I, I like to have. And mm-hmm. it's, um, it's basically anything, uh, a person book, um, something that has influenced you the most in, in this journey of, of doing music and business. Wow. The most. <laughs> or it, it could be, it could be several. It could be, okay. it could be yeah. several. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there, I, I would say there's, there's probably three things popping in my head uh, automatically. Could be a I movie. Have... Could be. Yeah, a, I, I know. know, right. That it really Song. is. <laughs> Then that will take us all year okay. because on every moment a song and movie and talk, you know, inspires me. But I think there's three things that really kind of stand out that have really made me like, okay. Um, one of my producers um, who I met in a, another a extremely divine way um, is Kendall Duffy. And Kendall is a very unique um, I would say he's a unique individual in the music field only because he's kind of, he's like a baby face in that he performs, he writes, he's a producer, um, and he's a music exec with his own marketing company in media management. Very rare. And, and sound engineering. He, you know, when he has his own studio. So that's like what Babyface does, mm-hmm. you know, these, these, <laughs> these mm-hmm. weird kind of, you know. And so meeting him, honestly, is what, and, and I met him through Kathy Carroll, that person okay. that I mentioned earlier. Um, but meeting him is what is what gave me the it, it was the light switch. It was it was it was the kind of like this is this is the real game. This is the real deal about the music industry. And you know, while you're an independent artist, you can't think. You got to think like you are a mainstream label. Like you got to understand. So he was a huge influence. Is still he he and I talk all the time. Because whenever I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I will call him and he's very calm. He's very, I mean, he's still growing. He's very humble. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's very accessible. So that's the main one. I would say another second one, and this goes to the craft because the craft is real is, is number one. You know I mean? If you don't, like you mentioned, if you don't have a product and if it's not solid, you know, I mean, and and so so I have a I have a vocal coach who I've been with for years, who was one of the first people before I even started recording. Um, she she her name is Lindia Johnson, and she is amazing, and she's been very good um, helping me understand my craft right. and, and the importance of of what that is and how the craft will open doors. You know, as long as you stay committed to the passion of that and, and the honesty of that you know, you'll be fine. So she's a huge influencer. And then the, the final thing I'm, you know, that really stands out for me is, is my family, my husband, I would say, um, my kids and my husband, my husband is very, I mean, he's a surgeon, so he's very black and white. He, <laughs> he has to be, it's, it's gotta, you know, he's, he's dealing with life and death. <laughs> yes, literally all the time, all day. I don't know how he does, but his, he's, he's, if you ever meet him, he's an extremely calm very calm, very laid back. Um, he, um, in fact, when he gets stressed, he, he gets calmer. Like he's a, mm. so he's a steady Eddie and the steady Eddie for someone like me, who's like, wow, you know, where are we mm-hmm. he's been invaluable. And, and, and many times, um, in spaces where I've got very angry at him <laughs> because I've wanted, you know, I want to do this and this. He's like, you have to look at this forest. You got. You're looking at the trees. You keep looking at the trees. I need you to look at the forest. And yeah, yeah. Um, so his honesty is um, sometimes difficult, but but always it really has it. been very yeah. beneficial. And my you know my kids keep me humble. They really do. They I, raising my kids is the hardest. It is this business. No, raising two boys, African American boys, one a teenager. Mm-hmm. Nothing like it. So they keep me very humble and very um, appreciative of of just being here, you know, mm-hmm. and, and doing so. Beautiful. So, you know, and spiritually, you know, God, I have a very active spiritual life. Great, um, great. And uh, I, I said that I was going to actually maybe start a little bit of a something I don't know about spirituality yeah. and and it's it's connection with, you know, with all of this. Well, you're living it. 
Yeah. That's, that's the other side of it. You know, that's, you know, you can, I forgot the quote, but it's, um, uh, says that, you know, go, go out and preach the gospel. Uh, and if necessary, use words. <laughs> <laughs> right. So just your live life. It. Your life is the testimony. Just My live it. God. Yeah, that's you're right. I agree. That's beautiful. Well, th- I want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, uh, let me talk to you a little bit. And we got to do some more catching up anyway. I know. I know. This was <laughs> a pleasure. And thank you for the opportunity and sharing this crazy uh, journey <laughs> or a moment of the crazy journey. There, there, there you go. <laughs> well, this is uh, Kenya. McGuire Johnson, or otherwise known as Kenya, and um, we're, I'll give more information on how you can uh, check out her music and also uh, follow her performances and, and just keep keep in touch with her. So, but thank you. Thank you. All right, take care. All right, bye. Bye.